This is another essentialist quote, or an anti-essentialist quote, I should say, um, and I will be unpacking it. This is going to be, at least for now, um, the last trans-based video I make for a little bit, because I feel like it's becoming quite a bit of what I talk about. I don't know why. Like, it's not like I'm... <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, so I feel like I get this wrong, and I feel like I might be channeling Nancy Friday a little bit. Um, this idea that she usually talks about in my framing, I feel like it's almost an olden day framing, back when we used to focus on this a lot more, which we still do. We still have traditional, like, conservatives and stuff that preach and act like this is, like, something that's barely, like, approachable to talk about. So... The topics that I've been talking about when it comes to the trans and woman issues are obviously like almost anachronistic because we sort of understand um, the, the progressivist ideas at this point. All right, so Nancy Friday once said, if you believe in the maternal instinct and fail at mother love, you fail as a woman. It is a controlling idea that holds us in an iron grip, uh, end quote. Um, yeah, this implies, in my opinion, to at least two things. Um, not wanting a kid even though there's a drive. And without menopause, many cis women have faced infertility, which is heavily sad. But unconscious judgment from others uh, focusing on lineage or studies saying you will regret it create the meaning for you. Of course, pro-choice will has always had this unspoken knife against your side, so to speak, unfortunately. Even though, you know, we do practice pro-choice, but it's not really, it's almost hollow, you know. We still expect, you know, once the progressive mask is off, it almost seems like you just go back to doing what you're told in society which is understandable like as a dude like I don't cry that often and you know it's probably not a good thing all right anyways um two there's an impl implication in how we frame what a woman is uh kids and estrogen but once menopause kicks in, we would never tell her she's less than a woman because of our visual and biological value moving around until backs are turned in polite culture and company. Three, if we had concepts like the grandmother hypothesis, which is a cross-species thing where mammal females have longer lives after having children or still being useful even if they can't have kids via kin selection, even though human women are alive now, it's not just because of evolutionary principles, but better medicine, uh, lowered female infanticide, and etc. stuff like that. And even while women are alive, there's new ways to kill their souls. You know, men too, but men get the positive stereotypes of being a leader. Women get the positive stereotypes of kids, but... Uh, I don't know, being a leader doesn't rot inside of you like a child does, so I don't really, I can't compare it. Uh, yeah, but if we had different checkpoints of female realization and respect for the sake of being friends, for the sake of friendship, not friend strings, you know, that drop once the, ex the aesthetics do. Um, then trans women wouldn't need to walk on eggshells, as literally women do, so to speak, you know, planting-wise. Uh, it is really sad, actually. Four, this is not about not seeing age, like people awkwardly claiming not to see color. It's about readjusting how we see it and our altering concepts of beauty, and the reevaluation of an anachronistic utility of childbirth. 
I feel personally bad. Um, if it sounds like I'm judging, I'm sure there's great joy and love in raising your own soul once you allow it. But people do say stuff like, I'm pro-life I'm pro -life and pro-choice, which is a deep emotional contradiction based on our definitions of pro-choice, which to some only means abortion, um, as opposed to the overall medical Planned Parenthood model. And we always focus on the abortion in Planned Parenthood, but that's absolutely not the case. 